Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, what I've got is a, a 99 GMC Suburban. It's a C1500, a little two-wheel driver. My son calls it a pavement princess because his is a four-wheel drive, but I love her anyway. The problem that I've been having is I've been getting the back passenger and the front passenger floorboards completely soaked. Uh, every time it rains, it's, it's wet, it's nasty, it's mildewy. It was a big problem before we even realized it. What was happening is, I don't know if you guys realize, but your carpet has a layer of rubber underneath it, and it was getting soaked. This bottom dampening, uh, squishy material uh, was all completely soaked. This is pulled up. I'm, I'm drying that out now. Uh, not so easy to do in the back seat, but we're doing that in the front seat. Uh, we took a bunch of napkins and we stuck them everywhere. It's a really good method of finding out where exactly your leak is uh, if you're not sure. Um, so we stuck napkins up top on the inside. We stuck napkins all around these. Uh, and we ended up narrowing down to our problem was coming from the right front uh, passenger door bottom here. Those part right underneath the speaker was welling up with water and spilling over. Um, of course, this looks different than what your truck does, hopefully. In order to get it down to all of this, there's a couple screws that are holding this plastic panel in place. You're going to have to take those off. Um, there's a oh shit handle up here. There's a plastic, uh, a plastic cover trim piece. It just has these little pop them on things. You just pry it off. Make sure you're nice and easy because it's 99. It's old plastic. It might break on you. Uh, there's two bolts holding the oh shit handle on. Those are 10 millimeter. You can take those off real easy. Uh, then we, um, to get to the door off. I'll explain that and then we'll come back to why I did that. When you do your door, there are two um, bolts right here that are holding the door panel on right where the handle is. And those are both going to be um, 932s or 1864s if you want to drive a mechanic or a carpenter nuts. I used to do that to... <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, at any rate, we need to take the door panel off because we suspected the problem was coming from in there. Um, so you take those two off. Mine had a screw holding the panel on. Yours should not. I don't know. We bought mine used, double used or something. And At any rate, the panel comes off real easy. Your panel, I'm going to take the panel out so you guys can see this. The back of the panel is going to have a whole bunch of these plastic um, clips on it. Do your best to get a pry bar, not a screwdriver, to try to pry these out. Try your best to get your pry bar in between the uh, the base of it and uh, the shaft. Because if you put it in here and just pry off, you're likely to snap off part of your um, door panel here. But you'll see around the outside, one, two, two on the left, two on the right, four on the bottom. Here's your two screws that are holding your handle on. Um, there's going to be three connectors you're going to need to take off. There's two that go right here. One is your lock. It's a smaller one. There's a bigger one that's your window up and down. This is a speaker, I guess. I couldn't hear it when it was playing. Maybe it's dead. But it's real easy to disconnect. So you got those three, boom, your door panel's out of the way. Okay, back to what I was saying. We took the napkins and we stuck them everywhere and we realized that our problem was coming from the bottom. We couldn't figure out where was the water coming from though. We know that's where it was entering the car. First thing you want to do is we thought weather stripping. The weather stripping was old. It's supposed to be a circle. It's not. It's smushed. Um, when you buy brand new weather stripping, it's supposed to look circular and you know the car squishes it over time, but nice and flexible in a big circle and the old stuff, as you can see, was pretty much flattened down. Um, now I will say, the stuff that we bought on Amazon, I went to Amazon and I bought the cheapest stuff that gave me the most length and uh, the stuff we bought was quality, but as you can see, the circle that's supposed to be squishing and, and doing the weather protecting it's, it's like half, get out of the way so you get some sun in there. It's, it's like half or one third of the circle. So I, I didn't look at the measurements. I don't even know if they were on there. But you can see a big difference between those two. Um, the one on the left is what we already had on the car. The one on the right was what I thought was going to be a solution. So we took off the weather stripping from the door panel or the door frame, put the new one on, um, put it all back together, went zipping down the road, and we heard shh and all this air coming in. It just wasn't big enough to make that connection. Then we took a hose, put it on top of the car, and let it dribble down and soaked it. We realized that not only were we still having a problem with this front right um, section of the kick panel here, 
uh, on the floor, but we were also having <laughs> problems up top now. So we actually created problems by going with the cheap Amazon version. I'm not saying buy the expensive Amazon version, I'm saying buy the right one to fit your car. Um, make sure that if you've got a truck and it's got big squishy stuff, you're buying one that's got big squishy stuff. Don't try to get chintzy and go with little chintzy stuff. I need to replace the back hatch uh, weather stripping as well, so I thought I was getting a deal by buying a, a bulk roll of it. Um, but no deal here. What I put back is just the same thing. I just moved it over, so um, because it ended up not being the problem. What was the problem, surprisingly, is right here. Your rear view mirror has a plastic piece that comes up top, and you'll see now there's all kinds of caulk in there, because I already shot this video, but I didn't like the way I did it, so I'm reshooting it. Um, water was getting right in here between this point and the door frame. Uh, it was dripping down into the door frame. It was running right along the window guide. And I put the speaker in the way back now, so sorry, but there's a, a window guide that comes right behind it. The water was dripping down to that. When I took the speaker off and put my hand in there, that window guide was completely drenched and soaked. And there was a bunch of water down here that would build up and that would eventually rust out the bottom of the door. Um, but anyway, the, the water was dripping from the window guide onto the window speaker, no, window, the speaker wires coming onto the bottom of the speaker, transferring over to the carpet on the door panel, and then transferring right over to this little channel right here. So this about three inch channel was getting overwhelmed with water. It wasn't pouring out, it's supposed to be out here. It was getting filled up and it was just pouring right in. From here, it was traveling down the channel all the way to the back seat, flooding everything that it possibly could, all up under the uh, passenger feet and the, uh, the rear passenger feet. Um, these wires, this is a power wire for an amp, that's an RCA. If you pull yours up, um, you're going to have this. This looks stock. Um, that's power lines that are run to the back for stuff. And there's this plastic sheathing that's on there as well. So if you're already flooded, make sure you lift up the sheathing and dry underneath it. It's very possible that this is where the water pools and you're happy that you got that dry, but this entire channel could be all messed up going to the back seat um, and flooding under there too. Uh, if it is flooded, I recommend, it gets a good sunny day, I open the door and I pulled the carpet back, I'm letting it dry out. I tried putting a blower on it, I tried doing a hair dryer, that was just too much mess. Just let Mother Nature do its work. But, oh, something else to show you guys too. If you take your uh, door apart here, you've got a, a little rubber thingy. This thing was bone dry, but if this was wet, that would also let you know that your problem was coming from this area. And it turns out my problem was this area, it's just a little bit more to the right. So, I'm going to put that back in. Uh, I'm not going to put everything back together until this caulk dries. The tube of caulk I used was, uh, it said clear. It's not. <laughs> so either it dries clear or somebody at the caulk factory thought it'd be funny to put a white tube in there. Um, actually, I need to get that because that's where the window is going to go up. So let me get that apart. I did both sides. I did, um, I did this side and I did that side. So just a little helpful hand. If you got a truck, if you got a Suburban, and you're getting flooding in the door panel area down by your feet, and you're like, damn, uh, first thing I is to replace the water, the weather stripping. Well, actually, first thing, I put napkins everywhere. See where your problem is. Is it a weather stripping problem? Is it something else? Um, I misdiagnosed the weather stripping, but that's probably your number one thing you're looking at. It's the easiest. You take the old weather stripping out, put the new weather stripping in, boom, you're good to go. In my case, that didn't solve the problem, and I had a further... Uh, kind of hunt what the problem was. But if you do weather stripping and you're still having that problem, or if you're having a problem right down there and it looks like it's localized to about three inches or so right underneath your speaker and it's coming from your carpet, your, your, the carpet, I'll show you when I say carpet, on these door panels, the bottom here is carpeted and right down here is where it was getting soaked. There was no water up here, it was all right down here dripping from the uh, door chan the window channel down to the speaker lines right here transferring to inside the car. I hope this helps. Uh, mine drove me nuts for a while and I'm hoping that's it. If not, <laughs> at least it's one problem, one more thing knocked off and I'll try to find what the next one is. Good luck. See you next time.